Hey, this is Gino T with the AFC North Report. Who do I like in the AFC North? The Bengals. That's right, you heard me, the Bengals. 4-1, and one, I'm predicting them to go in the first six weeks. That includes, obviously, their bye. Um, after that, they have Atlanta, which is a very winnable game. Miami, which is going to be a tough one, I think. Pittsburgh, winnable game. They've, they've swept Pittsburgh the last year. Then they play at Indianapolis. Um, I'm not saying they can't win that, but... Most likely, Indy's pretty tough. Who knows? Um, I would have to say that the, the, the Bengals will also be going like 7-1. and one. But um, we'll see. They're going to be good. I think they're going to win the division. Obviously, Chad Ochocinco is a guy you want to keep an eye on. Um, obviously, a lot of teams are, which is why, believe it or not, Terrell Owens could be an attractive option as a third receiver. Um, could be a stopgap guy, good bye week guy. He's not the guy that you start as your second or first receiver anymore. Um, I believe Terrell Owens will probably end up getting somewhere between 40 and 50 catches, 600 to 700 something yards and like four touchdowns serviceable. Anyway, um, as far as their, um, offense is concerned, they're going to have Carson Palmer back and healthy, uh, Cedric Benson, huge, came up huge last year. Who would have thought, but now he's starting to become that number four pick overall, uh, that the bears was going to originally thought he was going to be back when they drafted him. Uh, four or uh, five years ago. Um, Antonio Bryant, not really sure, not hearing too many good things coming out of camp with him. Um, tough to say who else is going to be a receiver on that team, only because none of the guys really have ever played um, that much before. Uh, Simpson, maybe. Uh, I'm trying to pull names out. Um, anyway, those are your main guys on offense. You know who they are. Defensively, they're going to be stellar, I think. Um, Antoine Odom, uh, Tank Johnson will be back. Uh, who else? You got Driver Gathers, uh, Robert Gathers, Roy Williams is in the backfield now in the defensive backfield, strong safety. Uh, Crocker, Chris Crocker, very good. <clears throat> Free safety. Uh, defensively, I think they're going to be solid. Um, so I'll look for the Bengals to be the number one team in that division. On to the Ravens, my number two for that division. And don't get me wrong, the Ravens could have one of those years where they come out of nowhere and surprise everybody. They're always solid on defense and just enough to get by on offense. But I think Flacco this year is going to have a bounce back year from last year. I think Heap's going to have a bounce back year. Ray Rice looked solid last year. They get the addition of Anquan Bolden, uh, Leron McLean blocking, uh, Mark Clayton. <clears throat> Got some really nice offensive weapons there. And um, for the most part, Flacco, I think, had an offseason – Mainly because of like that second year jinx, but he really didn't have a lot of offensive power. I mean, McGay, he's there, he's healthy. Um, they're gonna be solid on offense. Defensively, always a threat. Uh, Lodi Naha, Trevor Price, Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis is getting up there in age, but he can't put a penny on his valuable leadership in the locker room. Uh, <laughs> Terrell Suggs, who's getting up there in years, but still pretty good. Fabian Washington, a guy that I uh, came from the Raiders. Uh, Played well, but uh, we'll see what happens with there. Uh, you know, he played well last year for them. Uh, Ed Reed, guy's always hurt. You never know what's going to happen, and all of a sudden he steps in, bang, and you're done. Uh, guys to watch on offense also, I forgot to mention, um, Dante Stallworth. Uh, he's on the team. Not really sure where things are at with his head and everything, but we'll see. He's another guy you can watch out for that could possibly emerge as a guy that you might want to pick up um, later in the season. Uh, just as an injury backup, you know, Clayton's getting up there, and he, he sometimes gets injuries. Uh, Bolden, the guy's been injured, usually stays in and plays, even with a broken orbital. But you know what I'm saying. Bring it up third, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, let's face it, without Roethlisberger the first six games, they really, really have a tough schedule. Um, they're playing Atlanta, okay? They're at Tennessee and at Tampa, two weeks back-to-back -back with a solid defense that they're going against on the road with teams that um, can run the ball. Uh, and Tennessee, they've had problems against. Um, Tampa, Tampa's a tough team at home. Um, could have a strong running game back with Cadillac. We'll get into that when we talk about Tampa. Next up, they have Baltimore, a game they could easily lose. Then they have the bye week, uh, Cleveland and Miami. Um, Cleveland's a team that they could, they should be able to win. Um, I see them kind of going three and four in that first, that first stretch of seven games. Um, I think with Big Ben coming back that, that first game, I don't see him going to be lighting things up. 
Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Stranger things have happened. Heinz Ward is going to be obviously a guy you want to watch. Randall L back there again, uh, another athletic guy. But Rashard Mendenhall could be the guy that totes the ball uh, nonstop. He's going to be getting a lot of carries. Um, but all day more, don't look at him as anything more than a guy that's going to come out on third downs. Uh, he could still have a solid season. I would definitely uh, handcuff uh, Mendenhall if you're going to draft him. And I would draft him anywhere, I would say, in the late first, early second round. Uh, handcuffed Malal de Morto because he's definitely going to get some playing time. I can see it now. He always seems to. Uh, Heath Miller, solid tight end. Always liked him. Mike Wallace, he was a big guy that came on big for them last year. Byron Leftwich has really got to depend on his legs and his strong ability, not just one-dimensional with the legs because that's where going to be. Defense is going to be expecting to be up on them uh, on the run, and it's going to be tough. Um Defensively, they haven't really dropped off. They're getting, if anything, back. Uh, Palomalu hopefully uh, returns fully recovered uh, for them. Uh, but you still have Hampton, Woodley, Farrier. Uh, you have those solid guys that are coming in, back to the game. Ryan Clark, uh, strong, solid hitter. Defensively, they should be fine. It's just offensively, will they be able to put enough points on the board before the defense is on the field too much and wears down, and they lose some probable close games early on. Getting back to the doormat, but a team that I think is going to surprise us all, believe it or not, um, Cleveland Browns, obviously the only one left. But if you look at their schedule and, and the way they kind of came on last year, and I think with some additions that they have this year, um, I think they're going to make a step in the right direction. By no means they're going to be a team that you can just walk all over. Uh, and I think defensively they're going to prove that this year. Um, Josh Cribbs, they're going to do the thing with him with converting him to a receiver. Um, we saw that worked out with Devin Hester in Chicago. Not really too stellar. you got to get the ball in that guy's hands early, quick, and often if you're going to use him effectively. Um, I think he's just a good guy to keep on returns. Obviously, he wants to look for bigger money, and a return guy is just not going to cut it. Can't blame him, but that's how they got to play him. Quick outs, boom, run, get the ball in his hands. Uh, ben Watson, he's a tight end that I think is going to be pretty solid this year. Um, really things depend on, for them, uh, how Jake Delhomme is going to do uh, this year. Because Jake Delhomme is a guy that, even though he came out the Tommy John surgery, uh, is capable of putting up big numbers if he has some surrounding cast. And I think he does this year with uh, Massaqua, uh, Cribs. Um, I think that they're going to have, uh, uh, behind Massaqua, there's uh, Brian Rubisky. Uh, Rubisky is a guy that I think is underrated. Uh, Chancey Stuckey, another guy that was proven with the Jets. Uh, I think you're going to see him play well as a backup guy. Uh, could be a good possession guy right there. Uh, running back-wise, we saw last year that they um, came on strong with uh, Jerome Harrison. Jerome Harrison was a guy I picked up late in the season, I want to say week uh, seven or so. Uh, he was out there, got him, and the guy was a gem those last couple weeks. Just uh, tore it up, and I look for him to kind of continue. He's going to be getting the rock most of the time. Um, I don't see anybody else really um, challenging him for the spot. And uh, he has a great offensive line to run behind with uh, Steinbach, Pachos, um, Joe Thomas. Uh, I, I think they're going to be pretty solid, especially on the left side. Uh, your left, my right, left, you got it. Um, but I, I think they're going to be solid and they're going to be a pretty formidable team. Definitely a team that I think is going to be in it every game. All right, guys, listen. My next and last division for the AFC is going to be coming up to you on Thursday night this week. Um, that'll be the AFC East, and uh, got some stuff to talk to you about then. Till then, you take this.